I'm 33 years old, but for the past 20 years of my life, I've been covering up. People say I'm strong, people say I'm fun, people even tell me I'm pretty, but to me, I'm none of that. And it's all because of psoriasis. Most days I don't want to start my ritual of putting my creams and showering because it's just like two hours to get ready and by the time I'm ready I actually can't be bothered to go out. I'm one of over one million people in Britain who has been suffering in silence and it's time we spoke out. Psoriasis destroys lives and most of us feel helpless and ignored. So in this film I want to show how this disease affects my life. I also want to challenge the medical profession to take the disease seriously. I'll be going on a journey to meet others who have had to work out their own ways of dealing with it. Having survived breast cancer, this was far worse if you'd have compared the two. You can't let psoriasis have you, or it's over. And I'm hoping I can learn how to help myself along the way. My name is Rena and I live with my husband Dian in North London. Oh, and it might be outside on pay and display and that to listen to this. One morning I woke up and my life changed forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Psoriasis struck without any warning and to this day I don't know why. And I got it at like a teenage age, which is the worst age to get something. Even getting a spot is a nightmare for a girl. And then you had obviously the nasty people that called me names, I still like pizza face or rice crispy or stuff like that because when I initially got it, my face was covered with it. Did you pick up the um, peppers and that yesterday? Yeah, yeah, I did, yeah, yeah. The truth is no one knows much about psoriasis, but this is what I can tell you. It's a non-contagious, incurable disease of the immune system that shows as a disease of the skin. It's thought that there's a genetic element but it can be triggered by a wide range of factors such as stress and it can strike at any time of life. Okay, like, so this is my secret wardrobe where the clothes are where I hardly wear or would love to wear but can't. And this is my black number that I will never wear. I've tried it on and then it's just been in the cupboard and I've not really looked at it. It's just my little black dress. It's probably hard to understand where I'm coming from if you've never had psoriasis. People just probably see it, oh, it's just a skin condition. It's way more than just a skin condition. <clears throat> I try to explain to my husband how I'm feeling and I have opened up to him, but there's still a lot I won't tell him because I don't want him to worry about what I may do. I always end up at the thought of not wanting to live. I know. Oh, I hate doing it. The only treatment that helps is the cream that I have to plaster on every day, but that's greasy and sticky and it doesn't stop the pain. Do you want to defrost them? Yeah, please. Yeah. It would make life simpler if the treatments were faster and easier to apply. It's almost like my whole body is having a Chinese burn. Like when you're kids and you twist each other's arms. Like I'm just a ball of pain. Just my whole skin is like, just, I wish I could unzip it and just take it off. You look like a mm. I can feel the burning. And sometimes when I get to that stage, I can just smell my skin burn because of all the creams I may have used in the day. When I'm sleeping, I just think, oh my God, I can actually smell the burning. I feel like a volcano because I'm erupting and the heat of my skin sometimes is like a volcano once I've erupted. And at the age of 33, sometimes I feel like I'm going on 60 by the end of the day because I'm so drained physically and mentally that I just think, oh, just someone just ripped the skin off me. Why should I hide what I'm feeling? Why should I not tell the world what I go through. Excuse me, do you have a few minutes? We're just making a short film on beauty. Okay. 
people say beauty is more than skin deep but that's just the biggest lie ever especially like society now everyone's trying to look perfect and the most perfect person gets criticized i think skin is really important mm -hmm. to have yeah skin is is, is basically um, the start of how you make your face up at the end of the day if you don't have nice skin mm. doesn't matter how much makeup you put on it doesn't look good <laughs> what do you think of that well would you know what it is is it like birthmarks or is it burns? Oh god. <laughs> is it Bad contagious? Issue. The first thing you look at, you think, oh my god, it's contagious. You would kind of avoid them. You would kind of be... Maybe it's a little bit mm, disgusting. I think you have a nice glowing skin. Yeah. Yes. What oh do my you think god. Of this? Surprised. You wouldn't think I had something nice, would you? No. It's not on your face, so... You, you know, you can cover it up. It's, mm -hmm. it's not, it's, it's how you look at it and how you feel about it. I yes. would imagine an illness like that, a condition like that is more psychological than anything else. God forbid, it kill me. <laughs> um, I think it's very upsetting. People's reactions do affect me and affect the way I feel about it. Because they can say they're not looking, you know, I can tell when people are looking. If my arms are out in summer and it's half my skin's falling off, your, your, your first gut instinct is not going to be like, oh, she looks really good in that top. It's going to be like, oh my God, what's that on her arm? The people I really don't tell a lot to about how I'm feeling are my parents and my brothers because I really don't want them to know what, it's, what kind of hell I'm living because I don't want them to feel that They've always got to, that they have a sister that does is not happy. It's all a lie. <laughs> yeah, it still feels like you know we were just started seeing each other yesterday or something. I don't know why, but it just feels that way still sometimes. Because I still look gorgeous. <laughs> uh, well, sometimes you know there is a situation where you know we go to sleep, and you know she comes out with certain things like you know she's upset and. All she keeps on saying is like, you know, she just wants to call it a day now. I always have this little belief like, you know, let's talk. If uh, if there's something on your mind, let's talk about it. And uh, I think that's what's kept us going, you know, like strongly and being able to communicate with each other and to understand each other more. Even to this day, to be honest, like, you know, I've never taken that, like, you know, like when I've got psoriasis on her skin or anything, I've just, I still take her to this day as well. Like, she's still beautiful, <laughs> charming. You know, so... Pain in the bum. Well, yeah, she's a pain in the bum now and again, but... <laughs> Maybe some days he's having an off day, but he can't ever actually show me his off day because he's always on guard for my off days, which are all the time. It's like the relationship's all based on me and my feelings, what's making me better, and then sometimes I think it's not fair on him to live to let him live his life like that. And then when I do have my conversations with him, to say that I don't want to live like this anymore is because I want to release him from the burden that I am on him. To be honest, if she's here, I'm here. If she's not here, then I'm not here. I know there is other people out there in the world, but I don't ever feel like I'll ever, you know, meet someone like Rena. I just feel like, you know, the next few days are going to be very important to her when she shares it with other people and find out exactly what other people go through. In 20 years of having psoriasis, I've never been offered any psychological help. Most doctors I've seen never even ask how I'm feeling. But it doesn't have to be like that. I went to Whips Cross Hospital in East London to meet a psychodermatologist, Dr. Anthony Bewley. Good, Rena, so come with me. Um, the most important thing is that the dermatologist listens to the patient for how they feel about themselves and how they feel about their skin, but also to have an idea of what's going on for them socially and mm -hmm. uh, with their relationships and so on. Because we do know that psoriasis is not just skin deep. It does affect how you feel about yourself mm -hmm. and it also affects how you uh, interact with other people, so it affects your relationships. A primary care doctor, a GP, will usually enter into a dialogue with the patient and then work out what
treatments um, are best for that patient. If the patient has very severe disease, mm -hmm. then the patient should be referred immediately to a dermatology unit. If the GP thinks that they are able to look after the patient in primary care, and that's the vast majority of patients who have psoriasis, then I'd be very much uh, wanting and hoping that the GP would spend time with the patient. Mm -hmm. And what sort of support do you think you've had from healthcare professionals? None. Has your experience been unhelpful? Yep. It's always been a case of I have an appointment, turn up on time, sit there for two hours, get seen by a doctor for five minutes to be told, it's just psoriasis. It's just psoriasis. It's only those two words, just and only. When I hear those two words, the rage inside me is like, I have to literally sit there and count to three because I know I'm going to flip or blow. So tell me about what you would want from treatments and from a, a healthcare professional. A bit of sympathy, yes. support and a bit of time. Just a question such as, have you been since the last time I've seen you? Someone to recognise that I am in this mind frame mm -hmm. and to offer me support or to show me that I can come out of it or there is support there or there is somebody I can go and see. The experience of having psoriasis, how does that make you feel? Anger. Are you tearful? All the time. Every day? I cry day. myself to sleep every day. Have you ever thought of committing suicide? Every other day. That's very distressing. I'm, I'm at. I'm at my weakest point I've ever been in my life right now. Now I've started thinking of my family and my husband. It's like I don't want them to think it's their fault or it's somebody's fault. It's because I can't deal with it. It's because I've weakened. It's nothing to do with anyone else. Patients who have psoriasis have a much greater thought profile of committing suicide. Mm -hmm. So many patients who have psoriasis think, I have had enough. And, yeah. and that's completely understandable. Just listening is often uh, the first step and hearing what's going on for the patient and understanding that psoriasis is not just skin deep, that there are huge implications uh, to an individual when they have mm. psoriasis. The first time I'm coming out of an appointment without feeling volcanic, seeing the right people with the right experience and the knowledge that maybe I can get the support that I need. I felt when, when talking to him I could just open up and just say what it was that's been eating me all these years and the hope that I can sit down and just get that burden off my shoulders. I don't think I'd fully get rid of all the scars that are left but just help me deal with it in a better way so it doesn't take over. It was good to be listened to by a professional, but I wanted to meet other people with psoriasis, people who could understand what I was going through. It's something I'd never really done, but there's a huge online community that help each other. I decided to join a psoriasis forum to get in touch with others, like Kate Buckley from Yorkshire. My advice to people is to persevere and not to take there is nothing else as the reason for you not to carry on because you, you need to make your GPs aware, do the research if they're not doing it for you that you do it and, and to let them know how you feel and the impact that it's got on your life. Today Kate is at hospital for her six weekly infusion of a biological treatment. After much trial and error and persistence with her doctors she's found a treatment that has cleared her psoriasis. You know, if it was one pill that solved it for all of us, then that would be simple, but it, it isn't. And our bodies react in different ways. I'm quite excited to hear like what her experience has been like and just talk to somebody who goes through what I go through every day. Kate is also a breast cancer survivor and I was interested in hearing how she would compare both experiences. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Rena. Hi, Rena. How are okay. you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come on in. It's a cold Thank day. Thank you. I know. For me, having survived breast cancer, to then get this was just 
horrendous, and this was far worse if you'd have compared the two. Yeah, you would say... I, I would say living with the psoriasis was far worse. My biggest fear isn't that the breast cancer comes back, mm. it's that the drugs for my psoriasis don't work. And that's how bad or how much of an effect it's had on my life. Yeah. It is such a horrific disease. Unless you have it, got it, I, I don't think anybody could understand. Damn, no. With breast cancer, I survived, and therefore, that's a success. Yeah. When I was going through all the psoriasis treatment, I kept failing, yeah. and I couldn't understand how I could crack something like cancer and could not this thing called psoriasis. Yeah. And I hated it. I mean, with a passion with an absolute passion. I didn't really want to look at it. I didn't really want to talk about it. Mm. I didn't really want anybody else to ask me about it. You know, in a way, I hid it completely. Just make up. Studies have shown that the physical impact on psoriasis sufferers is as great as with any other illness. The mental impact is greater only with depression and chronic lung disease. When I had my breast cancer, I couldn't see my breast cancer. Yeah. And you had to deal with it but I wasn't waking up to it and looking in the mirror every single day. If you don't love yourself, you how do you expect other people to love you? And if you look in that mirror and you don't like what you see, mm. then, you know, it's very difficult to get close to people. Yeah. I genuinely believe that doctors don't understand just what you are going through. Whereas with the breast cancer, you really do feel nurtured mm. along and this massive willingness by your team to succeed. Mm. All of that is mm. nothing compared to the challenge of dealing with this skin yeah. problem. <laughs> it does give me hope. It's just finding the right treatments. And if I'm on the right treatment, then yeah, I do have hope. I want to be in a happier place. I think if you give in, there are dark demons that you fight yourself every day about mm. with this. And I think that's the biggest thing. Cheers. Cheers. <gasps> Nick Garthorpe is from Basingstoke. And like me, he's suffered since childhood. I started noticing that I had uh, a problem. It was back when I was about eight. I was, a normal, I was pretty much a normal kid, climbing trees, falling out of trees, breaking my arms. And then all of a sudden, psoriasis hit me. Yeah, and <clears throat> yeah, look I'll try. Sorry, the problem is I've I've kind of sort of buried it for so long to try and bring it up. It's um, it's not easy. Through school, one of the most difficult times of my life. Children can be very very cruel, and uh, when you've got a visible skin condition, you know you're a target. I didn't understand what was going on to my body at the time. I was covered in horrible sores and, yeah, I didn't like my body myself. And, you know, in my early teenage years, I could understand why people were being like that. I kind of hid myself away. I didn't associate with people of my own age. Sadly, I got involved in drugs, which to me just seemed an escape mechanism uh, to help me deal with the psoriasis. Thankfully now, I do deal with the public and I've come to... I won't say I've come to cope with it totally, but I've come to learn how to deal with it. I think that's why the job's very good for me. I can, for a while, put everything that I've got worries about behind and deal with somebody else's problems. Um, once you get used to dealing with other people's problems, you'd be surprised how easy it is to deal with your own. If in the early stages of my psoriasis, as a youngster, I had received a little bit more treatment about how it's making me feel, then I definitely think things would have been different for me. There's no denying that psoriasis plays a huge part in my life, but at the end of the day, Psoriasis is psoriasis, and you are you. You can't let psoriasis have you, or it's over. How old were you when you first had it? Um, just turned 13. How old were you? I was eight when I had mine. Oh my god. It's just difficult because I remember yeah. not wanting to take part in PE and making up excuses mm. and then I got to a point where how many excuses am I going to make and how many times can I forget my PE kit? I got into drugs, I got into drink, I never used to, I never used to change my clothes, I never used to bath because I, I, I could not see my own body. I remember going up to the GP and saying, you know, I'm dealing with the, the physical signs. Mm. It's the psychological and emotional signs that I'm, I'm struggling with. And it was 
yeah, never mind. You're kind of at that stage that I was at when I met my wife. Yeah. I, I refer to him as my dark ages. Sadly, I, I came very close to ending it all. Um, something that I've never really discussed with anyone, and, you know, mm. and I've dealt with those demons myself. <sighs> Treating the, the physical effects of psoriasis is great, but the, it's the psychological effects that need to be treated more. Yeah, uh, because I totally agree. I've it's... often said that, you know, technically, has anyone ever died of psoriasis? No, not because of the physical effects, but I wonder how many people have, have because just decided that's it. of the psychological effects, and that just, you know, that breaks my heart. Yeah. I remember so many days I'd come home from school, do the whole, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, da, 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 be the, like the, the loud child in the house, yeah. and then go upstairs and cry myself to sleep silently and just think, you know what, I can't let them see I'm in a state. Yeah. I've always said that people with psoriasis are brilliant at covering up. And it's not just covering up wearing a, a long sleeve shirt, but they also cover up emotionally. I think that's sad because you're hiding from who you are and what you are. Yeah. And it, it, clearly, you've come across as such a wonderful person. Yeah, OK, your skin, it's your skin that's on the show, but it's what's deep down that counts. OK. It will just hit a nerve. I know. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Oh. Be careful. Yeah. yeah, thank you. He seems so happy and just so content. And I mean, I'm sure he goes home and has off days and stuff, but it didn't seem like he would ever go back to where he was. And it was just like, you know what? You do have to control it, it can't control you. I'm going to Tunbridge in Kent to meet a GP, Dr. Stevens. Um, he's agreed to talk to me about how he deals with psoriasis with his patients. Dr. Stevens is a highly experienced GP and is also involved in assessing GP training. In the 20 years that I've had psoriasis, I actually never knew that the psychological aspect was addressed. Getting psychological support mm -hmm. and emotional support in the context of seeing GPs and specialists within the framework of five-minute consultations yeah. is something that you've not been able to access. And I think that you're right to give that challenge to doctors. Um, I think they don't see psoriasis in terms of the seriousness mm -hmm. which they see other illnesses such as cancer. I need somebody to address what I'm feeling and I can't ask for that on a repeat prescription. They have to change what they're doing now without having training, just be human. All I'm asking for is a bit of empathy. I'm always saying I'd love it if doctors could step into my shoes. So the producers offered to make it happen. Using makeup, Dr. Stevens was given the appearance of psoriasis, if not the constant itching. Hello, me again. Hi. Oh, hello. How's it going? Well, I haven't seen it, but uh, what do you think? Looks I'm really uh, good. a little bit apprehensive. Of I'm it. saying it looks really good, but it looks really sore. I'm just thinking, oh, I just want to just scratch it for you, but I know you're not feeling the itching sensation. Well, I'm happy with that. You also that? Right, yes. Yeah. Oh, it's very nasty in my head. Time to face the world and see how it makes you feel. OK, let's do this. OK. We now asked Dr. Stevens to face the world with psoriasis. Using hidden cameras, we filmed his experience. We also placed a camera on him to capture people's reactions. Oh, you've been in the ward? Oh, psoriasis. Is it? Oh, It's Very uncomfortable. They've been helpful, but then they have given that look but very discreetly yeah. and I think over the years I know what that look is so for me every time someone's giving you a look I flinched it's like they're staring at your 
wherever they can see your skin's flared up, but they're trying to focus on your face. And I know that it's not eye contact, you're looking at my ear because you're, I've got this second sense now. Do you do crampons? We do, yes. Where are they? They're, uh, they're all actually out the back. I don't think we have any today at the moment. All right, okay, well, don't worry. Some people stared, some people tried too hard not to stare. I think it was really, really brave of him and it showed that he's obviously willing to find out more and understand what it is that we go through. The fact that it's coming off just makes it feel not quite as real as yeah. having to live with it like you do. Mm. I sort of picked up glances and particularly um, in the last part, I was becoming more sensitive to people glancing at me mm. and then glancing away. One wonders what they're really thinking and should I worry about that? I suppose we all worry about what other people think. What would you expect of people when they see you? It's like I've already pre-prepared a reply in my mind as to if they was to say this, I'll say this back. If they do that, I'll do this back. Really? Or, yeah, it's like my defence is already up. I wish I could just have it vanish away just like that. It's like watch it go on and then watch it just go off. I'm like, oh. It's easy to understand why people with psoriasis cover up to avoid negative reactions from others, but could covering up simply make it worse? Andy Smith thinks so. He's a photographer and has psoriasis himself, so he's embarked on a project that encourages people like us to bear our skin, and the first person he turned his camera on was himself. As somebody that has it, I know myself that you spend some time or a lot of time covering it up, and covering it up perpetuates the, you know, the problem because nobody ever recognises it, nobody sees it. So when they do, they're wondering what's that and they're giving it a second look, which in turn makes the person that has it feel not very good about it. But if they did know what it was and it was acceptable, the thought process that they would have would be, oh, that's psoriasis, carry on reading the newspaper, not, what's that? I decided to test myself by agreeing to go in front of Andy's camera. I'm actually quite nervous now. No, no, it's happening. We're en route now, so I don't know. Hi, Hi. I'm Rena. I'm Andy. Hi, nice, nice to meet you. you. The idea of it is to try to, to get to a stage where you're confident enough to show it to people. The, the reason I wanted to do this was through practising yoga, which is done in a very hot room. It got to a stage where it was just getting so hot that I took my T-shirt off. For me, it was a big deal, but... But everybody else was Yeah, fine. it wasn't like everybody went, oh my God, what's going on? People do look and they notice it, but I don't really care anymore. I, I kind of... Just, you know, get I just get on with it, yeah. When I met Andy, his psoriasis was more visible than mine. And I just thought, oh my God, he's so chilled out. What is he eating? Give me some of that. I am really nervous, but I'm hoping that it will push and I'll be able to not just do it in a studio, but be able to walk out and go out in something that I would never normally do. And he had a t-shirt on. He wasn't bothered. He just seemed, yeah, yeah, this is it. This is who I am. It's not Andy with rice, it's I'm Andy. And I was just like, oh, I wish I could just do that. I wish I could just think, you know, shot this go out in a vest and say, yeah, I'm Reno. I brought some dresses along with me that I would never wear. So just to be able to wear the dress as a dress would be something huge for me, or so I'd just like to have pictures of me just being in a dress, like a normal girl would want a picture of. Oh, just clunk, clunk, clunk. So what I've been asking people to do is just be very proud, stand tall, chin up, straight back with your hair, can you sort of brush any bits that are sort of hanging down a little bit? Can you, either behind your ear? Yeah, that's great. I'm used to hiding my hands. <laughs> yeah. So I'd be like this in the picture. But let's try not to do that. Lift your chin up very slightly, but that's great. Can you turn this way so that we can sort of get your, your midriff in? Yeah. Slightly, if you're happy with that. Would you do that? Yeah. Eww! <laughs> <There you are. laughs> 
I just remember just having a laugh and just letting go and just thought, you know what, I'm standing here in this dress now. Just let's just do this thing. My Bollywood character is gonna take over any second. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised it was so quick. When Rena came out, I thought she was looking a bit nervous, but she got into it very quickly. Yeah, she was entertaining us, not the other way around. Um, <laughs> I sign autographs later. <laughs> My black dress that's only for my closet. I've had it for about a year now. I only took the tag out of it this morning. So if you can sort of turn yourself so that you're the other way, yeah. So, yeah, can you put your, yeah, your right foot sort of back slightly? Very cool. So then just relax your, your right arm down a little bit. It's like I ripped out of my own body and psoriasis was here, behind me, and I pushed out. That's great. Just do that again. Like you, you, were, you were square on. You were, you were really, yeah, brilliant. And I think that's why I stepped forward and crossed my legs when I did it. I was talking to my psoriasis, saying, just go away for a little while. I think my eye just looks straight at my scars. And I'm you're, trying you're not, yeah. Scars. I'm just trying to remember like, like the fun that I was having when I was having them done. Because while I was having them taken, I actually felt I don't have it. Maybe that's a good mantra to take with you. I mean, you obviously totally forgot about it. Yeah. You know, you know. But look at that, that's, that's got attitude. <laughs> you're confident that you don't look like you're hiding anything. It's just the look on my face on that one, I'm just thinking, That's why can't I look at people like that when they look at me? <laughs> yeah. That is the one picture I can see that I'm just saying, you know what? You best just look straight in my face because this is, this is my story. To be honest, I don't think I've seen this outfit before. She looks stunning. Amazing. I wore this for the shoe and I'm hoping I do take it out of this cupboard and it doesn't sit in my pile of clothes that are bought not to be worn. This is bought to be worn. So hopefully I might see this soon. And going on this journey, it's just given me that hope again that I'd given up on um, to fight and just to, just to deal with the fact I have psoriasis, but it can't, it's not gonna take over my life and take over who I am. The only time I remember that she ever wore a dress was when she was younger, when she showed me in the pictures before she got the psoriasis. But, you know, come 20 years on to see her wearing a short dress like this, you know, I'd love to just walk down the street with her just like this. I'd be the luckiest man in the world, I reckon. Definitely would be the luckiest man in the world. I was in one hell of a nasty place. So if this hadn't come along when it did, I don't think I'd be here today. I just feel so much for her, you know? It's just... That's all I want, like, you know? It's just, like, for her to just have a normal life, really. This has just given me, like, the push to sort of say, stop what you've been doing all these years and just start again. So I'm starting again. At 33, I start my life again. Excuse me, sir, do you have a few minutes to talk about beauty? You are beautiful. There's beauty surrounds you. There's nothing else. You've got the aura of beauty. If the world was as beautiful as you, the world would be a better place. Thank you. <laughs>